Shalom, shalom, chavarim, shalom, greetings, greetings, greetings. I'm Yadin Ben Chayil, a.k.a. Ras Ayadonis Tafara, L-O-J, the line of Judah Society here, here, our intelligence services right here. So let's get some intel on this. There's a lot of info and disinfo around me, but question, question. What is the real, right, gospel of the one whom the world calls Jesus Christ, right? What is the real, the real, the authentic, the true as it is written in spirit and in truth? What is the real gospel, the good news? Bringing out that word, gospel, good news, right? Good news. What is the good news, right, of the one who the world calls Jesus Christ? You say, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos, Yeshua ha Notri, Yeshua ha Moshiach, Robeinu, Adoneinu, Moshecheinu. I and I, Rabbi, the Rabbi of Rabbis, our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeshua HaMoshiach. What is the real, the true, the authentic gospel? Now, many ones will say, they'll say, well, Jesus saves, right? They say that Jesus saves, Yeshua saves. Yes, we recognize he is Adon, Ha-Adon. He is Lord, he is Moshiach, Moshiach. Right? He is Lord and Moshiach. Moshiach, Moshiach, Moshiach is Savior. Moshiach, Mashiach, Mashiach is the anointed, the Messiah, a.k.a. Christ, Christos, the anointed. So yes, we don't doubt that. We accept that. We credit that. We yea and amen that. Yes, he is Lord and Savior. But let's put that in context as well. According to the scripts, who did he come to save, right? He came to bring salvation into the world, true. But who did he come to save according to the scripts? Because this is very important. People talk about the gospel, the good news, right? What is the gospel, the good news? The gospel according to the scripture is not that so much Jesus saves. Yes, part of that message that is the, the bigger, the fuller gospel, the good news is yes, he came to save his people. It's right there in the scripts, in the Bible, in the Brit Chadash, in the New Testament scriptures. He came to save his people. Amo Yisrael. I came for the lost sheep, right? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yisrael. Yasharal, as I and I brothers, right, of the other mansions. In my father's house, there are many mansions. So we, as Rastafari, Yehudim, right? Judahites, Jews, quote unquote, right? We as Rastafari Israelites, what Babylon feel like? I and I is an Israelite from foundation, foundation, teaching of the elders that are worthy of the double honors. Yes, I. So the gospel, according to the scripts, what is the good news? Now this might surprise ones and ones. Could you really hear ones and ones speaking about what the scripture says? What the Bible actually says? What Yeshua HaMoshiach? Remember how important it is. You know, for those who will call themselves Christian, right? First, he calls himself Christian. We go to the roots, right? He is Yeshua HaNotri, Jesus of Nazareth, right? We are Nazarenes, right? So from the first time, right? From the original time in the Moshiach, the Messiah mind, in the real Christ consciousness, what is the gospel? What is the good news? Like I said, many ones will tell you about Jesus saved and he came to save the world and so forth and so on. And they will gloss over what is actually written in the scripture. Let's bring this up, right? Let's bring this up right here, here, here. Let's bring this up right here. So here, we actually looked up gospel and we find gospel like 99 verses, right? There's 99 verses. Let's look at the first verse right here. First verse from Matthew chapter 4. Verse 23, that's now that's early in the gospel, in the good news. In Matthew chapter 4, at verse 23. And what does it say? It says, And Yeshua went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues. The synagogues were like the Hebrew, the Jewish, the Judaic church, the church. Because the Sina, Gaga, Sin mean together, and Gaga mean to gather, the assembly. That church, right? The the Kehila, the Kaha, right? Later we call the Knesset, but the gathering. So we call that the Hebrew church, right? And preaching, right? And preaching, proclaiming the gospel. You see that right there? The gospel of what? The gospel of what? People say it's the gospel of salvation. Here I see in the scripture it says the gospel of the kingdom 
and doing what? And also healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. So the first mention here, just looking up the word gospel in the Bible, we're using the KJV, right, version as a point of reference. The first mention we have, right, of gospel in the Bible is what? Right, the first mention is the gospel of the kingdom. What is a kingdom? A kingdom is a government. Right here from the coin of Greek, from low degrees to high degrees with the G932, Basileia, ba Basileia, 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 right, Basileia, right, is royal power. Uh oh, the gospel of what? Royal power. Hmm. The gospel of what? The gospel of kingship. Hmm. The gospel of what? Domination, the gospel of rule. All right here it says here there's an A entry here we're looking at what's the B the Thea Thea definition here in the New Testament says not to be confused with an actual kingdom but rather the right or authority to rule over a kingdom interesting not to be confused with actual kingdom now some would say that some of the the Nazarenes right some of the Talmudim the disciples who became apostles especially we look at Acts of the Apostles around this season here Hag Shabuot Samiach. Happy, happy, happy harvest season. And the reason for the season, the Irit, the Isla Irit, the Holy Spirit harvesting. Harvest those those fruit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh. Yay and Amen. I Iras, the Friday, the Pentecost day, 50th day here in the season. Right? But they said not to be confused with an actual kingdom. Now, in Acts of the Apostle, chapter 1 is a very important chapter in this connection. The connection of the second advent, what we refer to as Christ in his kingly character. It says not to be confused with an actual kingdom, but rather the right or authority to rule over a kingdom. Now this is referring to kingdom. So this is just what the Thea definition here, just using it as a point of reference. Come, come, come. Make a reason. The B entry is of royal power, the royal power of Yeshua. Might of Jesus arises as the triumphant Moshiach. The C entry, the given definition. Now, a kingdom is basically a government. I want you to keep that in mind. And we, the lost sheep, lost black and brown people, the Bait Yisrael, the Beta Israel, we're the only people in the world that have no government. Even some of our, we can say African or, or black people on the continent in Africa, they call Africans today, right? They even have their respective kingdoms and governments, you know? Maybe they're good, maybe they're bad, but they have that we, the ones lost, now found here in this wilderness, right, of the Americas and the Caribbean. We are without that. We do not have that government, right? You know what I mean? Our own government. You hear one's talking about nationalism, right? Na black nationalism. What about the kingdom, the government? Let's overstand this right here. See, this is the reason why then you can put together why we study HaTorah, why it's important to study the Torah, direction, instruction, and to keep that constitution, the Esaret HaDebarim, the Ten Words, known as the Ten Commandments, according to the teaching of the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, my advice to all is to fulfill the Ten Commandments, that groundation, the constitution for the Bait Yisrael. Because when the Israelites came out of Egypt, we have the birth of a nation, right? And a birth of a nation, right? With the giving of Ha Torah. Some people think that the Torah and the Bible is just like kind of uh, quote unquote spiritual or religious things, right? They don't see the practical real world application, right? The full of full. Right, how that material, so to speak, and the spiritual, the phi cycle and the meta phi cycle. The C entry says, kingdom, Basilia, in the Koine Greek, of the royal power and dignity conferred on Christians, according to this entry here, in the Moshiach, the Messiah's kingdom. Now remember, the first name, the original name, the name that Yeshua recognizes as, wasn't so much as Christians. Now in truth, we recognize that. Right? But even the Moshiach said, many shall come in his name and say they are Christ right? and shall deceive many. Right? And this is the state of the present world in these latter days and time. This is why we ask the question, what is Rastafari? Right? What is the true gospel? Right? What is the true gospel of the King of Kings Christ? What is the true gospel 
of the King of Kings Christ. I want you to understand because as Matthew testifies him, and this is also the fulfillment of that prophecy we have even in what's known as the gospel, right? In the four gospels, right? The canonical gospel, the canona, the canon, right? The cana. Yes, the sea entry is of the royal power and dignity conferred on the Nazarenes, in its original sense, the Nazarenes, right? Known as the Christian, the Christians, the Meshachawiyan, the Messiahites in the Messiah's kingdom. Now we get two. The second entry, a kingdom. The territory subject to the rule of a king. Hmm. So the gospel is concerning a kingdom. It's concerning the territory subject to the rule of a king. Right? The King Messiah. We're speaking about the King Messiah. We're speaking about Christ and his kingly character. We're speaking about the second advent. Right? They say he will come as a what? A thief in the night. They say that they will come as a thief. Used in the New Testament, the Brit Chadasha, to refer to the rain. So it's using a New Testament scripture, the Brit Chadasha, the Adis Kidan, to refer to the reign or the rulership of Hamushia. Now, Messiah, let's not spook it out. Messiah means the anointed one, right? We see the first Messiah in the scripture, right? In the, in the Hebrew Bible and also the King James translation. The first Messiah actually is Aharon, is Aaron. The first Christians are actually the sons of Aaron who are the priests. They're the first ones, right? Then we have priests, prophets, right? And also kings. We get King Saul, a Messiah. Right? And then King David was anointed. Now, if we put it in New Testament terms, we have King Saul as a what? Messiah, but also as a Christ or a Christian in that sense. See, this is applying the Hebrew perspective, the Yehudi perspective, as the Moshiach said. You all worship that which you know not. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Yehudi, is of the Jews. And even we, the black Jews of the lion of the tribe of Judah. So here, note that kingdom is effeminate. Kingdom is feminine. It, it, it's, 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 it's of the feminine energetics. All right? We're using this English, so, you know, just for basic point of reference. Now, in the Hebrew, we have Malkut and Mamlaka. In the Amharic, we have Mengist, right? Like Mengistu, his kingdom. Very interesting when you think about it, right? But here, the Strong's definition, right? It says, properly royalty. So the gospel of what it says, royalty. Hmm. So the gospel, right, when some of the gospel of the kingdom, Yeshua HaMoshia says in this gospel, the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached, right, all over, right, and then it will be all over, and then the end will come. But see, the real gospel is not being preached because most ones don't know what the real gospel is because they haven't taken that time to study to shew themselves approved. They're spooking it out. You know, so now if we apply this to the once lost, now found after it's 400 plus years, and we really apply this and we really credit it, or as one will say, have faith or believe, but we step up to a higher level, the word believe or believe is really to credit, to admit as true. If we don't discredit this, but we credit this and we put in that work, we do that work because faith, right, without works is dead. So if we, if we have faith in this, but we don't do the commensurate work, but first we have to know what it is that we're doing. A lot of people are do, 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 do. They're doing a lot of stuff, doing a lot of do, do, right? But they don't know what they do, right? That's what, that's what the Moshiach said. Even, even on the, the tree of his cross, he said, forgive them for they know not what they do, do, right? But here, according to the scripts, the gospel of the kingdom is the, is the true gospel, properly royalty. That is abstractly rule, rule, rulership, or concretely a realm. See, why the Gentiles, the other nations, and the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, you know, why they miss this right here is because they're already ruling. They've already been ruling, right? Well, over the 400 years, they've been ruling and downpressing job people, the once lost, now found people, the Bait Yisrael, we the black people of the world, especially over here in this captivity, right? Over here in this Americas, in this wilderness of North America. So here's the true gospel, the real gospel, concretely, in a concrete, in a real world sense, it's a realm, right? There can be a figurative aspect of it, right? The allegorical, a figurative aspect of it, but there's an actual aspect. You see what it has here? Kingdom and reign and rulership. Now, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, leading up to what this season, this time is, the Shavuot, the harvest, harvest of the Holy Spirit in the upper room even the upper room of Zion, 
Here, 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 the reason for the season here. So what is the gospel? What is the true and authentic gospel of the King of Kings, Christ? Again, what is the true and authentic gospel of the King of Kings, Christ? It is the gospel of the kingdom. It's the gospel of royalty. It's the gospel of rule. It's the gospel of the realm. The gospel of the realm. The gospel of rule. The gospel of royalty. And this, this makes perfect sense. This is how when it says he so save his people. Right? So Yeshua as Savior, he is Ha Adon, right? And he's Ha Moshiach, Moshiach, Moshiach. That is Savior, Mashiach, Mashiach, right? Is anointed. Let's just get it right, right? Right and accurate. So you, so you can see it. You should be able to see it right here. Now we go through the other verses, right? Look, 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 look in chapter 9. We're still in Matthew chapter 9. And Yeshua went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues, the Hebrew churches, Right? And preaching the gospel of the what? Of the kingdom. It, here again, we have Matthew here, chapter 4. We get to Matthew chapter 9. And once again, we have the gospel. Let's define that euangelion. Euangelion. U means good. Right? Gelion. A gelion. Right? Good news. Good tidings. Right? Glad tidings. Good tidings. Glad, happy tidings of the kingdom of Elohim. Elohim is power. The Almighty, the power, our Father, person, our God, Father, right? Soon to be set up, right? And we see that manifestation in his time. She shall shew who is a blessing, only potent, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, conquering line of the tribe of Judah. Weep not, behold. Yes, I, Rastafari, and subsequently also of Yeshua HaMashiach, the founder of this kingdom, right? This is after the death of Messiah. The term comprises also the preaching of concerning Yeshua HaMoshiach's suffering. Now, you see what it says right here? Here's how they add something and they kind of take away from the first thing, right? They kind of make the first thing, right? They actually take the, first, they take the main thing off the table. This is what we're putting back on the table, right? Front and center. The gospel, the true gospel, right, of the kingdom. The true gospel is the gospel of the kingdom. The true good news is the good news of the kingdom. The true good news is that a people once lost, now found, even after 400 plus years, that we have royalty, we have rule, we have reign, we have a government. Right? We have a government in the King of Kings Christ. The Moshiach, Yeshua, Ha Moshiach, Jesus Christos. And also the real world application. Right? So when we look at the revelation of that man who's assigned in the seal, Conquering line of the tribe of Judah is Imperial Majesty Halas Selassie, elect of God, King of Kings of Ethiopia. And we look at those works, even for us over here in the West, even when we look at the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. All the, a lot of the mix up is because ones don't have the first principles, the first precepts right, right and accurate, right? It's like being half original. They still are thinking, you know, they're thinking pro Halas Selassie, right? But your theology. Is not to Wahido. Your theology is not the true teaching, the true theology. We're not talking about church men and people and priests. We're talking about what is written. Go check out and start to read the manuscripts. Right? Read the books, the manuscripts. Ask the priests of the Orthodox Church for the manuscripts. Right? Also for Archbishop Yitzhak's book. Ask them to print that book, get that book in circulation. It's because of them, right? When Yeshua said, many shall come in his name, they suppressed that book. It's called the Ethiopian Tawahedo Church, an integrally African church. Why I point that out is because there, in that book by Archbishop Yitzhak, right, whom the members of the Federation, they requested to know more about the Orthodox Church. And His Majesty sent him, and he came first to America, then later on established the church in the Caribbean, particularly Jamaica and elsewhere. I point that out because it's important for us to give us the teaching of his majesty. Because we say Christ, right, from the east, right, from looking to the east. And because over here in the west they say Christ, right, it may be the same name, but are we speaking of the same kind? It's obvious we're not, right? right? It says you shall know, right, by how much love they have for one another. We see how much love counterfeit Christianity has had right, for us. How they have used the Bible right, and abused the Bible right, as a weapon to downpress humanity, to confuse one spiritually, 
right, for wickedness. Not all, not all, not all, of course. We're not saying all. But by and large, it has been used. You know, it reminds me of, it reminds me of how David was Christ or Messiah. He was anointed and Saul was Christ and he was anointed. But how one anointed, one Messiah who was anointed persecuted the other, right? Thus we have the fascist invasion, Mussolini, the Antichrist, the papist invasion of Ethiopia, right? After the coronation and anointing of the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. So the real gospel is the gospel of the kingdom. But it says right here, after the death of Messiah, the term comprises, that means this is how they kind of added some things to it, right? Also the preaching of concerning Yeshua Moshiach as having suffered death on the cross to procure eternal salvation for the men in the kingdom of Elohim. Now that right there, yes, yes. But remember, they all don't leave Yisrael out. Yes, we know that many of our people right, reject it, just as many black people and many even Israelites reject they reject the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, the king of kings of Ethiopia, even to this very day. Right? But that does not obliterate right, the will to those who receive. Right? Those of us who receive, may we be assigned to those who either reject, you know, and may they come to proper respect. You know what I'm saying? But as restored life, restored to life and exalted to the right hand of Elohim in the Shemaim, hence to return in what? How will Yeshua return? Now, we have to speak about theology because some are confused, right? When his Massey prayed, right, he didn't pray to the, quote, Father. He's manifesting the Father according to the words of Yeshua in the Gospel of John. Pray to the Son. If you read the autobiography, right, this is what the Son says in Revelation, how he is seated down on the throne of the Father. He was first at the right hand, Stephen testifies. Now he's on the very throne of the Father but returning in majesty to consummate the kingdom of Elohim, the glad tidings of salvation, especially salvation to call Yisrael, first to the Yehudi, to the Jews, the Judahites, even I and I have the line of the tribe of Judah, and then to the world. Charity must begin first at home. The proclamation of grace of Elohim manifests and pledged in Moshiach, the gospel, as the messianic rank of Yeshua was proved by his words, his deeds, and his death, the narrative of the sayings, the deeds, and death of Yeshua HaMoshiach, and also the resurrection. They don't have that resurrection. They always like to stop you over at the death. You know, powerful thing it is. But even more powerful is that resurrection. As Elohim Ha'ab resurrected Yeshua HaMoshiach, Adonainu. So we are being raised. Right? Kam Yashara'la, yes I came to be called the gospel or glad tidings. But the way the Gentiles proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ or Yeshua, as they might say, right, is not the same as what is actually written, right? What is actually written, because they always leave out true Yisrael. We, the ones lost now found black and brown people of the Beta Israel. So the good message, the good message is the gospel. The good message is the good news, to bring good news, to announce glad tidings, right? And this is use of the Old Testament, right, of any kind of good news. So we have actually the good news, the foundation of it, in the, what's called the Old Testament, that Hebrew groundation for all you Old Testament only Israelites as well. So the gospel, the gospel, we have the gospel, here we have again, in the red letter, Yeshua, his own word is that red letters when Yeshua is speaking. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness. Which gospel? The gospel of the kingdom. See, they're not preaching the gospel of the kingdom. They've left out the gospel of the kingdom. They 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 spiritualize the kingdom. Right? They try to put the spook eyes of the kingdom. What is kingdom? Kingdom is government. Kingdom is rulership. Its government is rulership. Right? It's our own law, not being under. Right? Not being under the law of the Gentiles, but we are redeemed from that, right? Because the time, the time, the time, the time has come, right? The time has come, right? In his times he shall shew, who is the only, who is the blessed and only potentate, the king of kings, right? Lord of lords, yes, I, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, weep not, behold, Yes, I, Rastafari. So here, here we say we'll just touch on a few words. 
right a few words right here just a few words we are you know touching on right here and the, and to build more of a reason I know many ones and ones you know many ones and ones and ones know that I have more you know to say on this and and questions because I know that this is not what we have been told or what we have been how, how you say made to believe or led to believe you know we we, we, we have not been given that full of full right you know the fullness of it you know they've they've been partial you know they've been partial you know as it were they've been partial about it right they have not been so-called impartial right so the difference between the real and the fake you see the difference between the real and the fake how they how they spook it out how they make up a lie but when the reality comes see they said that the the serpent and the hash was the most subtle Right? We have to be wise as serpent, harmless as dove. But look at how harmful they are and they have been to people with counterfeit Christianity. You know, spooking them out. Right? That when it actually comes to pass, they don't recognize it is true. Haile Selassie is not Yeshua HaMoshia, but in Haile Selassie, Yeshua HaMoshia is in Haile Selassie. That's who he testifies to in spirit and truth. It's what they call the, the mystery. Right? The mystery, according to the Bible, King James, of the Father and Son. That's the mystery of the Father and Son. And there, which says, I am in the Father. Didn't Yeshua, HaMoshiach, say that? Right? Even right here, 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 I've heard of the idea of Haile Selassie being the reincarnation of Jesus Christ. I also met certain Rastafarians. I told them clearly that I am a man, that I am mortal. Some people say, see, that shows he's not Jesus Christ. Or, 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 or why you compare? Well, hold on for a moment. Yeshua himself was a man and mortal. He said, no, he was God, but he died as a man and he was raised. He didn't raise himself according to the gospel. It's his father that raised him. He came to testify on behalf of the father. And if we read carefully, even in John chapter 15 and especially John chapter 16, we'll see about the second advent. Right? He is speaking of the father as he says, I am in the father and the father in him. Right? So when we see his majesty, we are receiving that person of the power, the father, that manifestation of the Yeshua's word right? in him. Right? And he fulfills what Yeshua said there. He would not speak of himself, but would speak of Yeshua HaMoshiach and would testify to Yeshua HaMoshiach in spirit and in truth. And this is what we see in Kedemawi Haile Selassie. So when he says, he says, they should never make a mistake in assuming or pretending that the human being is emanated from a deity. Because emanation is a philosophy that goes against the basic biblical teaching that man was created in the image and after the likeness of Elohim, of the true good, the true God, the power, the almighty. Yes, look up emanation philosophy and you'll see there's a difference. Emanation philosophy denies creation. This is what His Majesty was warning I and I about. But as far as Him saying, I'm a man and that I'm mortal, according to the translator, yes. Don't you know that Yeshua HaMoshiach came to restore, right, humanity, right, to the divinity? He says, I am in the Father, the Father in my eye. If you keep my words, then, then, then I then the Father is in you, then I and the Father will sup with you and that we will be one. That means that even that divinity is restored to I and I. Right? That divinity is restored to I and I. I have said ye are, right? Children, you see what I'm saying? And then even that Psalm there talks about a fall and then Psalm talks about a rise, a resurrection. We're in that time, Chabarim. So we're talking about the kingdom, we're talking about government. Right now, we can connect this with Daniel's Daniel's prophecy, Haile Selassie's government, and Daniel's prophecy, and the reverberations for I and I as the saints, even in these latter days and time. Come, 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 make reason. Right here, I'd like to share this right here. Where are we over here? We see we got the kingdom, right? The sign and the seal, right? The kingdom, the sign and the seal. That sign and that seal, that man who's the sign and the seal. Yeah, here we go, right here, just on this. Right here, we talk about government, right? The true gospel, right? The true gospel of the kingdom. And we're going to seal up with this right here for right now, brothers and sisters. Sisters and brothers, get into more, a little more detail. Let's go here where um, that's in the power. Let's go to power of the Father. Notice that even after the crucifixion, the death, the burial, and the resurrection, Right. 
that the disciples over here, right here, here, here we go, right here. The disciples said this right here. Right? He says right here, he says, well, and and they therefore will come together, they ask of him. This is after the resurrection, before the ascension to Yeshua HaMoshiach. He said, they ask him, saying, Lord, Adon, Adonai, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Yisrael? Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Yisrael? Very interesting, right? Because at that time they were under what Roman occupation and preoccupation. You know, it was like it was like police in the hood, the centurions and all of that. You know, they was under Rome. What we see in some parts elsewhere around the world, you know what I mean? Like that. But this is how the, the, the Judaites, the Judeans, right? So they were asking now that, that you have done what you have done and what has been revealed, is this a time now that we're going to get that kingdom? Because we have to recognize that when they heard concerning the kingdom, right, the gospel of the kingdom, right, since he came to save his people, Right? Did he come to save his people? You, you do know that he came to save his people, right? Well, let's go over here. Some might not know they came to save his people. Right? He came to save, right? Save his people. Right? Let's go save his people. Let's, let's, let's look this up right here. Save his people. Right? He came to save his people. Let's go over here. Let's go to the top of the gospel right here. And she shall bring forth a son, a Ben. Right? And thou shalt call Shemo his name, Yeshua. Yeshua. For he shall Yoshia in the Hebrew, Yoshia. So he was called Yeshua because he shall Yoshia. Yoshia means he will save Amo, his people, from their sins. Now it's very clear that this was spoken concerning Yisrael, Israel. Right? This is why even Paul, Rabbi Shaul, a.k.a. the Apostle Paul, even in Romans and elsewhere in the Gospels, he says, yeah, the Judahites and the Israelites have messed up. Right? And because of their mess up, there's some grace that extends to the other nations while they're in their messed up condition. But don't y'all get so proud because if, Job, if, if Elohim broke off the natural branches... Right? Then he'll break you Gentiles, you, 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 you wild olives that have been grafted into this natural tree. And as he has broken us off, that he can graft us in again. This is the time that we're in. We're in that re-ingrafting time. He shall save his people from their sins. Right? Just to point that out right there so ones can have the, the verse. Let's go to power father time. <laughs> power father time. Right here, here, here. Just to seal up on this right here. Concerning what is the true gospel? You showed it. There's 99 and there's other verses that we can get into. But just right here, here, here. To suffice it to say. The gospel, right? Even the gospel of the kingdom. Right? The gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of royalty. Right? This is what is significant about the coronation of his imperial majesty, Kedemawi Haile Selassie. This is what is so significant about even those so-called 72 nations, right? Those 72 nations that bore witness, 72 nations. We can go to the book of Enoch and other prophetic, you know, um, prophetic words, right, of revelation. And we can also witness how that which might have seemed parab parabolical or, or allegorical, we see an actual fulfillment as it says in the epistles, in his times he shall shoot, who is the blessed and only potentate, right? The king of kings, yes, I, the lord of lords, the conquering lion of the tribe of Yehuda, the tribe of Judah. So right here, 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 let's look at what they ask. When they therefore were come together, they ask of him, saying, Adon, Lord, Master, Gita, will thou at this time restore again? Restore what? Renew again. Almost like a do-over, right? Like a do-over. This is after 400 years, what you think, call Yisrael get. We get a do-over, right? We get a do-over in grace and in truth, right? If we receive... See, that, that's why it says that he gives that power to those who credit on his name, on Shemo. He gives them the power, right, to be the B'nai Elohim. That's very, very important. 
right? And the spirit testifies of our spirit that we are B'nai Elohim. And see, we apply this first to the Yehudi, first to the Beta Israel. He says, the lost sheep, right? The lost sheep of the house of Yisrael. The message is still true. In counterfeit Christianity, they basically, you know, ignore that part of it, you know? They ignore the warning that Rabbi Saul, Shaul, had given, a.k.a. Apostle Paul. So they asked this question, were you at this time, after the crucifixion, death, burial, and the resurrection, but before the ascension, they asked this. Verse 7 says, and he, speaking of a Yeshua, the resurrected, the risen Yeshua, right? Ha'adon kam, ha'adon, he's risen. He said to them, is it not, it is not, he said, it is not, right? It is not for you to know the times or the seasons. So the reason of the season, the times, how times are important, seasons are important, and of course, how Torah, the law is important. But he says, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father Ha'ab, that Elohim Ha'ab. So, Elo <laughs> one might say Elohim Ha'bein or the Bain Elohim Hayin, the son of the living power. Right? The son of Elohim, the son of God, says right here, it's not for us to know. He's speaking to the Nazarenes, the disciples, the apostles. It was not for them. It's not for us to know the times or the season. This is why it says in Daniel's prophecy that they shall seek to change times and laws, that confusion. What time is it really? If you know anything about time and look at the Ethiopian time and look how time is being told by based on the Bible, right? Ethiopia still keeps time, the daily keeping of time, the same way. In fact, 9 o'clock, 9 a.m. is really the third hour of the day. And 3 p.m. is actually the ninth hour, just like the Bible says, but we only have Ethiopia to thank for keeping that. The Israelites of Ethiopia and the faithful in the true church and the professing Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo church keep that. Right? You know, to their credit. As well as the seven years, the difference. So there's a lot of time that they've confused that's why Yeshua says it's not for you to know the times or the seasons but which times are we speaking about we're speaking about specific times and seasons that the father Ha'ab have put in his own power in his own exousia my right? power of choice liberty of doing as one please his own leave his own permission his own physical and mental power the ability or strength which one is endued which he either possesses or exercises the power of authority influence and of right privilege the power of rule or government you hear you hear you hear the power of rule or government the power of him whose will and command must be submitted to by others and obeyed. You see, the first of the children of the Ethiopians understood that. Many of the generation understood until we get to the last, the last days. You know, the last days, even the 1970s, right? Then the rebellion, the careless Ethiopian, the rebellion against the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. Weep not behold, Ethiopia. So universally, as I and I Rastafari say, I universal, non partial. Universally, authority over humanity, Earth's rightful ruler. Specifically, the power of judicial decisions, of authority to manage domestic affairs. Metonymically, a thing subject to authority or rule jurisdiction. Right? One who possesses authority, a ruler, a human magistrate or judge, the leading and more powerful among created beings, superior to man, spiritual potent, potentents. Right? The sign of the husband authority over his wife, the veil with which propriety required a woman to cover herself. These are all examples of authority. So when it says power, there's twofold power. Here is the, the, the authority that's in the power of Elohim Ha'ab, right? First and foremost, as Yeshua prophesied to the second coming, we will think that we see Yeshua, we think we see Jesus, but he's actually saying that it will be the Father testifying, right? Testifying. Yes, I, yes, I. Uh, the Rastafari Israelites coming up, coming up, coming up. Check us out on the YouTube. So the sign of regal, of royal authority, Truly having the divine right to rule, right? Not all kings have divine right to rule, but the king of kings of Ethiopia has divine right to rule. 
and then symbolize in a crown right so here 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 we see this right here we can see with his authority his ability a sense of ability privilege force right capacity competency freedom or an objective sense mastery concretely a magistrate superhuman remember that book by J.A. Rogers concerning Hala Selassie right from man to superman potentent a potentent right one who's potent token of control what they always complain about with Kedemawi Hala Selassie they say this short man this this little man like like a Davidic Yeshua of statue stature sort of man but he has great authority right great authority great influence how is that right what does he say listen what's his word do you keep his word do you even hear his word delegated influence right now this is what he has given to even i and i as rastafari that's why in that in that word sound he's never heard of this idea but he was only speaking to us he's saying he didn't even say the idea was wrong notice this people say that oh he was denying being christ when he says that there's no way in there he even says anything about being Christ. He said, I've heard about this idea. That's why if you listen to the full of full, it says, despite this clear decoration, that's the, that's the author, you know, that's how they do it. But you have to be able to think for yourself and really understand that what he's doing right here is he has what, they said millions of what, Christians. Not just Rastafarians, but there were many. If you look at the historical, the true testimony of the time, right? But the authority, jurisdiction, liberty, power, right, strength. Right, so here we're getting this full of fullness, but let's just seal up right here because here's what Yeshua said don't worry about that, in other words, that's going to happen in its due time. Right, we have the birth of the Son of Man, that man child in Ejosagora, Ethiopia, right, in Ethiopia, where the Israelites, right, the remnant of Israelites went in Ethiopia, Psalm 87, verse 4. With Ethiopia, this man was born there, you know, put these two and two together. Right? Here we have where Yeshua says, don't worry about that. That's going to happen in its due time, in its due season. Right? And we see that manifestation, 1892, 1930, November 2nd. But ye shall receive power. Now look at this power over here. You saw the power in the other verse? This is dunamis. Dunamis is strength, power, ability, inherent power, power of residing in a thing by virtue of its nature, its nature, or which a person or thing exerts put forth. Power for performing miracle, doing the work. Ja works. Ja real works. Moral power, right? Moral theocracy, the moral power. Excellence of soul, of psyche. Power and influence which belongs to riches or wealth. Is that level of, you say, power. Power and resources arising from numbers. Is that form of power. Notice how many ones will trust on these other forms of power, but not on the power that Yeshua says they will cabal and they will receive, right? Power consisting in or resting upon armies or forces right but that's not the force see this is more the force in them hark is actually chayil chayil what we have in the hebrew as well chayil which means power chayil as we say chayil selasi the power of the trinity right the hebrew trinity we have as abraham yitzhak and yaakov yes for we who are israelites but you all shall receive power after the ruach kadosh the holy spirit right is come up on you and ye y'all shall be witnesses to me, both in Ye Yerushalayim and in all Judea, Judea, and in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. If you look at this on a map, it's like from the center, it's like a circle, it's like a dot, and a circle, and another circle within a circle. First we start at the at the at the at the heart, right? At at the center, right? At the center, and then it radiates to the to the uppermost, the outermost reaches. That's why it says, first to the Yehudi, the Jews, right? Even we, the black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah, once lost, now found. Black and brown people of the Bait, Yisrael. So, my fellow Hebrews and Israelites, you may not accept this, but check this right here because this is the reality, right? And the reason why people say, well, how come such and such, you know, and we still in this situation? Because your ancestors, some of your ancestors didn't receive it as true. It's the same way that Yeshua came forward, right? He came forward, he testified, he put in that work. We could ask the same question, right? People were raised from the dead, but then people were still dying. You know, how come some were able to receive and some didn't receive? Because some believed or believed or admitted as true and others didn't. Others credited as we credit and many of y'all discredit. 
right? So you'll get the reward, right? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, right? If you, like it says, either make the tree good, right, and the fruit good, or make the tree bad and the fruit bad, right? So here, 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 brothers and sisters, when we're speaking about what is the true gospel, the true gospel is the gospel of the kingdom. And according to the, the, the biblical prophecies, and also according to, we could say, the book of um, the book of Enoch, <laughs> right? According to the book of Enoch as well. Very, very important. It's on the Ethiopic book of Enoch. And then the, um, you know, the copy version. You know, that's, that's the Dead Sea Scrolls, right? They always try to avoid the Ethiopian testimony. And, you know, that shows you what counterfeit Christianity, you know, is on. Right? They still are dealing with, with fleshy, carnal, you know, they still are biasing, you know, biasing, you know, biasing us because of, you know, the carnal, which shows and proves that they have not received the Holy Spirit, those who do, right? But to our cousins, you know, to those Europeans or others, you know, um, who have been about truth, you know, Judeo-Coptic, Judeo-Christian-wise, you know, we welcome ones and ones. Come, make we sup together. Come, make we reason, right? For this message is for all, as His Majesty, even in His testifying, had testified to all. I mean, some powerful words for the church, you know what I mean? For all denominations, you know, non-partial. But anyway, brothers and sisters, look more right here, here, here. Shalom, Habarim. Shalom, speaking about the gospel, right? The gospel of the kingdom, right? The gospel of the kingdom, the good news of the kingdom. Some even in that time saw and recognized it, right? They say, this old man, the ancient of days, right? This old man, according to the prophecy, right? See, the prophecy is not, a, is not like you fantasize it, you or me fantasize, but based on the word, can we admit that this is the reality, right? Based on the word, Right? Let's admit that this is the reality. Here, here. This kind of sums it up right here. Shalom, Habarim. Shalom. Join I and I on the end and the Irish. Check out the YouTube, Rastafari, the Israelites, the, the evening podcast. It's I, Shalom, Habarim, and Chag, Shabuot, Sameach. Happy, happy, happy harvest. Right? Here in this harvest season. Right? The harvest, the Holy Spirit in the upper room of Zion. The Holy Spirit, Isla Irit harvesting. I harvest the, the good fruits of the Spirit, even those nine fruits of the Spirit. Shalom Chabarim. Oh.